Okay, what's up today? Well, um, seems like alum-based electrolyte for batteries has become really popular. Uh, that's thanks to John Bedini and his fine work and videos. And uh, so you know that I've experimented with some of this before on my earlier videos. And uh, I'm just going to continue a little bit. So what I have here is two old batteries that have been completely, totally useless. This is one of the type that have a, a wrapped up anode and cathode. And uh, this one that you might have seen around in the background of some of my videos that has become totally useless. There was no way of getting anything from either one of these uh, two cells before I started. So what you're going to see at the beginning here is this battery with the alum electrolyte in it. Uh, recharged and cycled a couple times and doing very well. I'm going to plug it into a board here and put some uh, little bulbs in here and light them up and do a couple of load tests. Then I'm going to go on to this glass of something over here which is really uh, the insides of this opened up, cleaned up, and wrapped up again in this uh, chamois. Um, and uh, that also worked out very well. So, like I said, we're going to start with this and then move on to that. You might have seen some tests on this battery earlier lighting up the bulbs. So if you've run across that uh, video on the uh, internet and want to jump ahead to uh, the uh, wrapped up battery, just go ahead and do that. Now, I'm not going to get specific about the mixture with the alum and the distilled water. Uh, I'm adding the link to John Bedini's uh, videos where you can get that uh, first hand and get it right because this may or may not be right but I will say this that right or wrong with the formula you can have some fun save some of these other batteries and probably work with uh, something that's quite a bit safer than the acid I'm not saying it's perfectly safe because I don't know but to me, it's the ingredient they use for pickle juice, so uh, just uh, keep in mind you got to keep washing your hands when you're done playing with this stuff. And I'll get on with these tests, and I hope you enjoy the video. I'm going to plug some a couple of bulbs in here. So there you see what we were dealing with before. One bulb is, that one anyhow, is 77 milliamp draw. And of course, we're going to go down there. I'm not going to wait for that. I'm not going to wait for that to settle down. I'm going to just put some additional bulbs in there. And get that below 11 volts. There's two 117 milliamps. There's three 191 milliamps. It did drop below uh, 11 volts now. Here's four, 260 milliamps. There's five, drawing about 339 milliamps. And uh, what's the battery doing? It's down below 12 volts now. Oh, how disappointing. It's going down slow. Now, if, if this battery was on John's graphing equipment now, uh, you wouldn't see the, the line going down. I mean, you're talking about one ten thousandth of a volt down here. If I go here, a lot of people have meters that have three digits behind the decimal point. Uh, you can see that this battery I mean, it's holding its own. I'm not kidding you guys. That's not crashing down anywhere. I wonder if I should try to get a couple more bulbs in there. Um, maybe if I take a wire out here, move something over and get one more. All right, there's another one. So I've got 
one, two, three, four, five, six filament bulbs running. And uh, I'm drawing over 400 milliamps. And take a look at this battery voltage. 11.834. Um, <laughs> guess what? It's dropping less now than what it was before. Uh, can I get another one in here? I'm going to remove one of these grounding clips. Stick another bulb in here. I'm going to remove a grounding clip over here from this other side. Stick another bulb in there. Right now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight filament bulbs in there at uh, 558 milliamps, over half an amp. Check the battery voltage. I can't, <laughs> I can't fathom that. Let me see if I can get one more bulb in here somewhere. Um, maybe. Yeah. I don't even know if I can fit one. Let's see. Ah, you got another one in there. So now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine bulbs in there. I can actually feel the heat from them. So I'm drawing almost 600 milliamps. Take a look here, people. This thing isn't crashing and tumbling down. Let me go. I'll take one more digit here and, and we can see it all right so now what looks like really is going down there is one ten thousandth of a volt at a time <laughs> you know you want to put more bulbs in um, I only have two left I don't think I can fit them in anywhere Okay, let's see what we have going here. Bulbs are still going. Time. 10 to 5. So half an hour has passed. Uh, we're going down a little bit. Drawing 577 milliamps. And our battery voltage has dropped down to... 11.2 and dropping, but it's not zooming. It is dropping a little bit faster than before, I would say. This is one heck of a current draw, though, people. So uh, it's really, truly unfair. But that's not looking bad. Maybe I'll let it go for a little while yet. And uh, see, because, well... You know, you got to remember that this battery wasn't fully charged when I started, so not a fair test at all. Okay, it's been uh, 45 minutes now, and uh, we're still going here. 
still drawing over half an amp but we're starting to drop <clears throat> a little bit faster over here we're uh, down to less than ten and a half volts okay so there's an hour's worth and what do we have the bulbs are still going uh, drawing a half an amp and we're going down now I would say that this would be all I wanted to push this battery uh, for uh, with this half amp, amp anymore you know a half an amp draw <laughs> might spoil anybody's curve I think that uh, if this was uh, drawing C20 instead of 10 times what the battery should be saying for a load then you know maybe something would be really different so all right so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop this here and uh, let's see how the battery recovers and I'll summarize a little bit this battery has only been charged twice fully and uh, once for about an hour and a half and uh, so I don't expect that it's it's uh, completely there yet and uh, after this run and after this run you can't see it but I can see some water on top of the uh, plates uh, like John said would would happen um, there's no bubbling while the discharge is going on because it would have popped the caps um, uh, okay so the voltage has gone back up and uh, now holding again with the motor running and the uh, output from the extra coil going to the diode so anyhow this is all a lot of fun isn't it I'm having fun well put a little more power on it cook it up a little bit here running at 65 milliamp now this is C20 for this battery and what we got over here still holding pretty good isn't it so are you in the mood to go through another uh, discharge test <laughs> I'm not I'm not but anyhow I'm impressed so we still after that that discharge of of uh, 600 milliamps still have stuff left in here to be playing around with how long will it run this way I don't know I gotta cut this video off here okay so here's another alum battery and I uh, thought I'd show you this because it's probably just a little bit different than um, what we've been seeing everywhere uh, this is another uh, project that's inspired by John Bedini and um, he has some very encouraging videos that you can take a look at I'll post a link here under the video and take a look there for good instructions but uh, what this is is an older style battery that was in the round cylindrical type cells and uh, basically the anode and cathode are wrapped up in a in a roll with the uh, separator in between <clears throat> and here quite a while back I pulled one of these apart unwrapped it cleaned it and wrapped it back up with this chamois and uh, was going to do some experiment with the the four part salts and stuff I never got to it and I forgot about it uh, now that John is uh, renewing the uh, the idea of using the alum and the the lead um, I thought I'd just throw that in a uh, alum solution and uh, I know it's a uh, probably would be better with the uh, paste and the and uh, separators but this is the actual anode and cathode in a, a real liquidy state of the alum I think that John also showed that as a 
option for some of the batteries on his earlier videos where the uh, uh, it's a concentrated uh, solution. So I just thought I'd give it a try and it seems to work really nice and uh, it's very powerful. It's only been charged up and down two or three times and uh, I just want to back up what John was saying on his last video about about these uh, holding up pretty good under the the uh, self discharge characteristics. Uh, this has been sitting about a day and a half and uh, you can see that it's settled in at a voltage of about 1.5 so on so on so on down the line and this meter you can see is is one that has five decimal points or five digits to the right of the decimal point so what you're seeing way down here on the end flickering a little bit is what I don't even know I guess a hundred thousandth of a volt or something so uh, you can see <laughs> Even talking made it go up a, a little bit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Look at that. See, it is true. Um, at any rate, you can see that if if the battery was self-discharging, you would see it going down pretty good at, the, at that kind of a meter reading. So I would say the self-discharge characteristics look pretty good. So uh, since it's been sitting here, let me do something with it and hook something up. And as John would say, I'll be back. Okay, I am back. So I did figure out why this battery seemed to be going up a little bit while I was talking. It's not because I was talking. It's because I have this light up here. And uh, uh, it's three foot away from the battery or whatever. But anyhow, just the uh, change in temperature here. Um, around the uh, glass of battery made it um, go up a little bit and I'm sure it'll start to do that again but we're not going to waste time so anyhow what I have here for a setup is I've got a little Radio Shack motor it's running right now and uh, yeah, oh, let's see I have it hooked to the power supply if I stall the shaft you can see it has a dead stall of uh, 489 milliamps on the power supply. I have the power supply set for uh, about 1.4 volts. That's probably around where I'm going to be operating when I hook this up to the battery. <clears throat> and if I switch there, you can see the power supply says that I'm running at uh, 170 milliamps. That's reflected here also. Uh, I have a uh, 1 ohm resistor here in series with the motor and I'm collecting the voltage reading off of that so that directly relates to uh, milliamps so I'm drawing 175 milliamps so now I'm going to hook that up to the uh, uh, little lead alum cell here and draw a load and we'll take a look uh, back Okay, so I have the motor running now, and we're running from the uh, lead alum cell. And I probably should put a propeller on there or something, but it's, um, you know, this is like a 12 to 18 volt motor, but it is drawing, it's turning pretty good, and it's running at 172 milliamps. You can see the battery here now is... Uh, is dropping and you know you'd expect that because that was the standing voltage of the battery at 1.5 so uh, now it's dropping down and would probably settle in somewhere down closer to uh, the kind of voltage you'd expect from a nickel cadmium battery or nickel metal hydride as John has explained that these uh, cells now act a little bit more uh, like a uh, uh, an ICAD in that voltage range and the characteristics of the discharge curve uh, curve seems to be somewhat similar so anyhow you are looking at too many digits here let me get something that looks like a normal readout like that and now you can see if we were graphing this you wouldn't be seeing a, a drastic fall off even though the uh, motor is running so <clears throat> what can we do now let's see what the dead I'm going to dead stall this now and let's see what we draw wow almost a half an inch amp dead stall and of course you can see that we're 
Well, I'll tell you what, dead stall, we are not dropping that bad. So we're drawing a half an amp right now from this cell. All right, getting back to this again, here is uh, the dead stall, which is very near half an amp. Let's just call it a half an amp for what it's worth. And we look at the battery again. And uh, that's holding up nice. I mean, I'm really surprised. The battery has only dropped a tenth, tenth of a, a volt. It's just drawing a half an amp right now. And uh, look how nice it's holding. So anyhow, I'm uh, I'm sort of a believer. Uh, I like this. I like it a lot. Um, one problem that I've always had with lead acid batteries is that if you're not charging them constantly and keeping them up, you can accidentally let them set long enough that the, uh, they'll self-discharge down to a level where they become damaged. Well, I'm hoping that with the uh, uh, lead alum that um, if it does discharge to a, a low point that it doesn't destroy the battery. And I'm pretty sure that John would probably say that uh, at this point uh, it looks like a good possibility that... Uh, you could have this and, and be a little bit more maintenance free. So what do we do to finish this up? Uh, you know, I could run some really long tests and I know what it's going to look like already because I ran one test um, and discharged a pretty good load for eight hours. So I know what the curve looks like. It's pretty, uh, pretty uniform the way John explains in his videos. And I just need to do something different. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to directly short out the battery across the 1 ohm <clears throat> uh, resistor here and we'll see how much current it'll draw. Hold on, be right back. Alright, I'm ready to go dead short with this so let's plug it in and see what we get here. Wow. Alright, I'm drawing 1.3 amps from the cell. I don't see any smoke anywhere. <laughs> okay, so we're drawing 1.3 amps. And this is a short, well, it's not a short, it's, um, it's a direct connection onto the uh, 1 ohm resistor. And let's see. Well, the one ohm resistor, the battery is measuring 1.3 volts. So anyhow, take a look at this. We're uh, I'll even I'll even decrease the reading here. There you have it, people. This is. Drawing 1.3 amps right now. Direct short right across the resistor. It's actually getting a little bit warm. One point two amps. One point two seven, really. Is that actually right? There's the clips on the battery. They go right across the one ohm resistor. And I'm taking the mellow taking the voltage reading across the uh, one ohm resistor. And it's one one point two six three volts. Same as the battery reading over here and dropping. Man, that's strong.
Okay, do I really want to do this? It's 5 o'clock. I'll let that run for a little while. Let's see what happens. One point two four four amps. Let's let that go for just a little while and I'll be back. Okay, so fifteen minutes has passed and we're still plugging away over here. Uh, we've dropped down to 0.9 volts and of course that's 900 milliamps. You see the voltage on the voltmeter over here also going down because we have more digits set up there but uh, <laughs> I'm telling you for draw, still drawing almost one amp that's not dropping very fast at all. Matter of fact it seems to be dropping slower than what it did uh, five minutes ago or so. At any rate, so um, do you think that's a fair test? <laughs> of course not, it's not fair at all. But uh, let's see here. The uh, resistor is getting warm. It's 101 degrees as compared to everything else is room temperature. So, uh, <clears throat> man, I like that. But uh, let's, let's try something just a little bit more practical. I'll hook some bulbs up. Okay, so I thought I was going to plug some bulbs in here, but <clears throat> I can't do that because they're 12 volt. I, I don't know what I'm thinking of, uh, about here. So, And uh, I have to tell you, my motors like the impedance that, um, that these batteries have. Of course, this would probably run for a year on this thing, but as you can see, the uh, battery is still going up from uh, recovering from the load that... Uh, it was drawing with the or was being drawn on it with the uh, uh, short directly across the uh, one ohm resistor, and so now it's still climbing, even though that's running. But we all know that that doesn't use anything. So I'll put a load back on this again with the uh, Radio Shack motor, and we'll uh, see what it's doing now after it's had that you know that heavy draw on it. So be back. What do you think, Ram? Want to do some more experiments with batteries? Huh? Is that what you're looking at? Okay. Here's a uh, just a quick little thing of interest. Uh, it's been overnight now, and this battery is set. And it, uh, after setting, it recovered to about 1.4 some volts. And I hooked the little Radio Shack motor up again. And uh, you hear it running. And it's drawing almost 200 milliamps, and that's been running for about an hour. And the uh, battery is still up around uh, one, almost 1 1.4 volts. You can see how it's, it's holding steady. So, uh, you know, the other day we ran it down with over an amp down to below a volt. And it's uh, set overnight now, and uh, it looks like it would run this motor for for quite a while so um, like I said pretty interesting I'm gonna take one of these batteries apart a little bit so we can take a look at it uh, so you just in case you haven't seen any of these wrapped up kind of uh, cells so be back <clears throat> okay what I've decided to do is show you what these uh, plates look like by taking this one apart and I'll just do that Notice I'm not too worried about getting the uh, electrolyte on my hands. Of course, I'll wash good, but um, this material is a, uh, a chamois synthetic, and I'll show you just how junky these plates are. John has complained about some of the inexpensive batteries from places like Walmart. And uh, look what we have here. This, this stuff, <laughs> it's surprising this is working, right? 
So here you see the, the two different plates. Here's the, the gray plate. And then this other one, it's got like a coating over the, the darker plate. Not fully understanding standing it, but this is the this is the positive plate. So anyhow, this is just rolled up with the separator so that uh, the plates don't touch, and that's what's in one of these rolled up cells. I'm just going to roll that back up because it's still usable. Not to let it touch. All right, so there you have it. And this, evidently, you can see this that this is not the the paste type of uh, electrolyte, but it could have been. I mean, if I'd have had a lot of uh, if I'd have had a lot of alum, which I didn't, I only had a one of these little guys from the grocery store. I would have made a paste plastered it in there and rolled it up and it would have been different in some way but um, you know I, I have to say that when you make one of these it's probably going to work I mean it even if you have the formula wrong you get you, you end up with a battery that you can use so um, that's what the fun part about it is <laughs> okay I highly recommend that you wash your hands after this. Okay, so here's a quick uh, little update on my uh, rolled up battery with the alum. And uh, you can see I put it in a uh, it's actually a pill bottle, <laughs> but it's chemical resistant, so uh, you can see I stuffed it in there. And you can see the uh, crystal uh, paste sort of on top of the battery. I've uh, taken that um, sediment out of the mixture I had and pulled it into one of these things here. And Put it, put it in there, and forced it down into the um, into the cell. You know, forced, forced it into the um, chamois. So, so there you have it. I've got something that I can, you know, easily use. And I've uh, I've soldered two wires on, which is something you you really don't want to do. Uh, but just for the sake of of uh, doing some tests until I get uh, a few pounds of alum and some lead. That's what I'm going to do for now because it just makes a little better connection for charging, which you can see is battery is charging right now. So there you have it on that. I'm getting tired of saying there you have it. You're probably getting tired of hearing that. Okay, John, I think that uh, <laughs> I finally have the knack for making this alum paste. How's that look, huh? Anyway, I think that's it. I think I was using the wrong credit card strip before. <laughs> okay, anyway, that looks like it to me. I'm ready to try something. Hello, I have one more thing I want to add to this video, and uh, this is for my friend Les. A while back we were talking about um, copper sulfate, and I mentioned how the old-time tool and die makers, I guess that would be me, used to use it uh, in the uh, tool room. <clears throat> and uh, what we used it for was to coat a piece of steel uh, and make it look, uh, well, it's copper coating it. And uh, that way you can put out, put your layout lines on it from a, uh, uh, you know, like a height gauge or however you're laying out your work to be cut on a milling machine. 
So let's take a quick look at that. Uh, whatever you do, wear gloves. Don't do what I do. Do as I say. Ask my kids, they'll tell you that. All right, so here's, here's a clean piece of steel. I can smell that's brown and sharp uh, tool steel, probably oil hardening. So I'm going to just rub that on there and see if you can see what happens. There you go. Can you see it? It's like magic, isn't it? All right. So there you go. That's what it looked like before. And that's what it looks like now.